Yes, I'm in the side of Coffee Stay 50 Review. Hi everyone, I'm Sam Spinks and this is Stabercraft's new 1550 Frontier for 2023. Two years ago when Stabercraft brought out their 1450 series, I was lucky enough to test out the Explorer version of that model. Now when the 1550 come out, I was super excited to be able to use one, put a few hours on it and see what this boat can really do. So I've had a lot of awesome adventures in this boat and I'm pretty keen to show you guys exactly what I've done and what this boat's capable of. I think the biggest strength of this Stabercraft 1550 is its versatility. This boat is still only 15 and a half feet, so it can do small boat tasks, but then it punches so far above its weight that you can take this on some bigger trips and keep up with some much bigger boats. To sum up its versatility, you can still push this boat off the trailer by yourself in two to 300 mil of water, but then in turn, you can also take it on some pretty awesome offshore trips. I actually took this boat 40 kilometers off Tasmania's west coast one day on a trip where every other boat was over seven meters long and I kept up all day, caught just as many fish and had just as good of a time, but in a boat a lot smaller. So I wouldn't want to have been out there that day in any other boat this size. I really think this boat punches above its weight and is far ahead of its competition in terms of its ride and handling capability in a big sea. My main goal while I had this boat over the last two months was to put it through as many different fishing and boating scenarios as possible. Those included going stripy trumpeter fishing off Tasmania's west coast. Ho oh, hey, Look at that! Loaded the boat up with diving gear and wind targeted on some crayfish. We've done a lot of wakeboarding and skiing trips behind this 1550. I've even packed the swags on the boat and gone on some overnight camping missions, which has been pretty awesome. There's enough room on this boat to roll out a swag on the deck and stay on the boat overnight. And other than that, just your general fishing and boating trips from day to day that you do in a boat this size. So powering this 1550, Dega Marine have chosen the Mercury 75. The 75 is the 2.1 litre displacement engine. It provides plenty of power and torque for this boat and I definitely think you wouldn't want to have any less but it's more than enough for all the tasks that I've asked of this boat. The engine's been equipped with a stainless four blade propeller which gives it plenty of torque and acceleration out of the hull while still allowing plenty of top speed. The boat handles really nicely at about 35 kilometres an hour in a bit of a choppy sea but if you want to speed things up a bit 45 kilometers an hour, the boat's still nice and economical. Open the throttle all the way up and you'll see 60 to 62 kilometers an hour out of this setup. Pretty impressive, very drivable boat and I've been super happy with how the engine has pushed along the 1550 Frontier. So being the sports fish model, we've got the bait board down there which is removable. Take that out really easily and put a ski pole in there if you want to do any skiing. Got a nice big hatch down the back there, compartment to store your batteries um, and any other things you might want to put in there. Got an underfloor tank which is 60 litres, found that to be really handy. Um, better than having tanks under the back transfer the boat there on a smaller boat. Um, the underfloor tank has been a real good thing. Under the floor there you've got a little well at the back with an automatic bilge pump in there and then tucked up under the transom we've got the deck wash with the hose coiled in the gunnel there so the back of the boat is really good. When you're cleaning fish um, the deck wash makes it easy just to keep the whole back of the boat nice and clean um, and everything just works really well. The transom setup on this boat is really good You've got twin steps there, which makes getting in and out super easy. Those ladders are really good. Um, it almost touches the ground when you fold down on the trailer. 
gunnels here are 300 mil wide, plenty of room to sit on. You can even put stuff like gas cookers up on your gunnels when you're cooking if you're camping on the boat. So plenty of width there to sit on and even stand on. The 1550 has quite a sleek side console which is nicely tucked on that gunnel there to keep it out of the way and free up as much deck room as possible. You got your controls down there for your engine, your steering wheel down here nice and low. So when you're sitting and driving, it's in a comfortable position. But then when you stand up, plenty of room there to hold on to that grab rail and still be in control of that steering wheel and it's not too low. I'm six foot four and I'm quite comfortable standing and driving and even sitting down and driving, there's plenty of room. Even a nice footrest there to rest on. On these nice wide gunnels at the back of the boat, you've got three rod holders each side and two cup holders. Makes plenty of rod storage, but then the cup holders also great for your drinks and your sinkers and lures for when you're fishing. So moving forward again, we've got another hatch here where the hatch easily lifts out. This area in here is probably the driest spot on the boat to put your gear. The only issue with is it's not true dry storage. This lid easily comes out as it does, but that means it can let water in these gaps. So any water from your anchor well, if you're running an electric anchor winch, will run down into that hatch. Um, I think the one little improvement they could make is if this lid was sealed, any water would run off the casting deck down onto your deck down the back without going into that casting deck. Um, having this lid as it is makes it really easy to take the lid out and then put gear in and out of that cast, casting deck area and it does make it easy for clean up and washing but it just doesn't provide you with any true dry storage which is something that is a real key on a little boat like this. You need to have somewhere to put your dry goods but other than that I haven't had much trouble with stuff getting wet in there because generally this is quite a dry area up the front of the boat. Unless you copped a wave over the front or you're using your electric anchor winch a lot and you've got water coming under these gaps here, you won't have any dramas. And then lastly up on the very front, you've got another sturdy platform which makes it great to get up there and lean on these rails and see what's happening. This lifts up, it's on a gas run and you can store an anchor winch in there or I've been running my anchor down under the back of the boat in a crate and putting fishing tackle up there. So plenty of versatility for all your um, storage needs and this is a great space up here to keep stuff out of the way. On this model, it comes standard with the electric motor mount and we've opted to get the raised bow rails, which I think are a must. If you're gonna order one of these boats, those raised bow rails are really great really sturdy to hold on to and provide a lot more safety especially when you've got kids in the boat or even general passengers um, gives them somewhere to hold on to and you can lean up on them when you're on the front they just a great thing to have this 1550 came standard with the 70 litre isotec esky it fits perfectly under this seat here it's got a little catch to grab onto um, which holds the esky nicely under the seat um, the split lid provides a great option for when you've got it under the seat, you can lift up the lid and still access it without pulling it out from under the seat. So that works really well and it's a great esky. One thing I really noticed when I looked at a lot of the other competitor boats um, in this size range is that when you get in the boats, the gunnels are quite low and you feel like you're actually standing up on top of the boat. But in the 1550 Stavycraft, you're definitely more down in the boat. That floor's nice and low and it gives you plenty of height at the side. So you can really lean on those side gunnels there and you feel nice and safe when you're in this boat. I'm quite a tall person, but I can still grab onto those grab rails nice and easily. And I feel like I'm down in the boat rather than up on top of it. So I think from a safety point of view, that's where Stavycraft is um, out in front of a lot of its competitors. Is that it does have a lower deck, doesn't mean it's a self-draining deck. When you've got a well down the back with a pretty good bilge pump, um, that pumps the water out nice and quickly, I definitely would rather have them heights in the sides to make you feel like you're down in the boat rather than up on top of it. So it makes you feel a lot safer when you're out on the water. I definitely think that when some people are looking into buying a small stabby car, there's going to be a bit of a way up between whether I go a 1450 or a 1550. Now I've had both boats, I can definitely say that there is quite a gap between both of these boats. 
Not so much a gap in the capability, but it's more of a gap in the size. It doesn't sound like much when you say 14 versus 15.50, but the length and the width of this boat, you can nearly put the 14.50 inside of it. It's just so much bigger, um, and the internal volume feels a lot bigger. The 14.50 still punches above its weight for its size, and it will nearly keep up with one of these 15.50s, but I think to just go that little bit further, um, and to take that extra person, you definitely want to be looking into the 1550. Another thing to bring into that is that on the 1550, you've got the capacity to take a 75 horsepower engine, which is quite a step up from the um, 50 horsepower engine limit than you've got on the 1450. So definitely think that um, if you want a bit more power, you need more out of the hull, you're going to be pushing more weight, the 1550 is going to be the boat for you. Stabycraft have done an awesome job in designing this new series of 1550 boats. There's only two little things that I think needs improvement. Firstly, the electric motor mount. If I was going to buy this boat, I'd definitely be putting an electric motor on the boat eventually, but that electric motor mount, while it is really nice and strong, the design seems to catch on some water when you're in a following sea and you really plough through waves. It will catch on the water and shoot a nice spray of water in the boat which generally will get the passenger wet or run down that side gunnel which is a little bit annoying because um, the boat is quite a dry ride and that one little thing lets it down just a little bit. One of the best things about this boat has got to be the access in and out of the back but an improvement that needs to be made is on those rear steps. There's a little gap either side which lets air and water through when you're backing up in the slop. I understand that's there so the step can breathe and so water and air doesn't get trapped underneath, but what that gap provides is a escape route for air and water mixture which sprays up into the boat and gets water all over your glasses and all over the dash and electronics all day, especially when you're backing up into some slop. So if that was if that gap wasn't there and there was some other system for the air and water to escape when you're backing up into a surge, I think that would definitely improve the backing capabilities of this boat and make the boating experience that little bit more enjoyable. But other than that, those steps are a great feature and make getting in and out of the boat awesome. I think the key selling point for this boat here is that it's gonna deliver for the most demanding fishing and boating people out there. I myself find this boat really attractive as it's so versatile. Everything I've thrown at this boat in the last two months of having it, it's just handled it and I've been really surprised. I now know that I've got the confidence to put four or five or even six people in this boat and go out for a ski or even if I want to just go with another mate and go way out off the west coast, it, it's going to provide a great stable platform for us fishing for the whole day. So. It's just a really versatile package and I think that's going to attract a lot of buyers. If you're in Tasmania and you're looking into the Stabycraft range or one of these boats, without a doubt head into Deegan Marine in Olveston there. They've got all your products from Mercury, Stabycraft, everything on this boat is all done by them. Um, I've been super impressed with the fit out and how everything's been put together. It's top notch. So big thanks goes to them for letting me have the boat for the last two months to show you guys what this thing can really do. I hope everyone's enjoyed some of the videos and seeing what I've been able to do in the 1550 Frontier. Well, that's all from me, guys. This has been the 1550 Frontier by Stabycraft and my review. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you found it insightful as to what to expect from a 1550. I've been super impressed with it. I absolutely loved it and I don't want to give it back. Righto, guys. Cheers. I'll see you on the next one.